Hey everyone, I am April Dunham. <laughs> I'm a Power Platform advocate at Microsoft. Happy to be here talking about the Power Platform prompts repo and doing a quick demo of that. This is my YouTube channel if you want to reach me there. That's also my handle on all the socials, so that's how you get in touch with me. All right, so let's dive right in. So who all has been there? Generative AI gives us endless possibilities, and we're excited about all the stuff that we can do with it. And then you start thinking about it more, and you're like, Generative AI gives us endless possibilities, then where do I start? It can almost be overwhelming, right? When you have this amazing tool that you can do anything with, and you just don't know where to start with that blank canvas sometimes, and maybe you could use a little bit of help. So let's kind of dive into that a little bit, and then we'll talk about where the prompt repo, the library fits in. So obviously it all starts with a prompt. That's how we interface with generative AI, whether it be any of the Power Platform tools and the co-pilots that we have across Power Apps and Automate and all that, Azure OpenAI, ChatGPT, Dolly, MidJourney, all of those, uh, we interface with those tools with prompts. So they're really just text-based queries or instructions that guide the AI model into generating content for us, whether that be text content, images, whatever tool that we're using there. Now, there's a few, you know, a few generative um, general tips here for kind of crafting the, the perfect prompt, I would say. There's, I mean, a perfect prompt is maybe a far-fetched word, but you, you get where I'm going out here. Uh, first, clarity is key. So make sure that your prompt is clear, concise, specific, and you're really conveying the intent to avoid any misrepresentation. Provide context, that's really important as well. So give context about to help the generative AI understand the scope and the purpose of what you're wanting it to help you with. Specify the desired output. This is another really good one. If you're wanting it in a very specific format, like I want to return this in you know, JSON format or whatever it might be, or um, this should be code, whatever that output, it should be a poem, a story. Specify that in your prompt. And use examples, like here's an example of, I want this in, um, this is really good where you can kind of specify the tone or the style that you're looking for so that it can better grasp your expectations. And of course, iterate and experiment. So we're gonna be looking at the prompts library here and a lot of the prompts that you're gonna be seeing are made from people iterating and experiment. They're trying something and they're figuring out what works best to get the best result from the tools. So that is really where the prompt library is to the rescue. So that's a kind of a lot to learn just to know how to write a good prompt to get the most out of the tools. And again, it could be overwhelming to know what you can even put in there. So with the prompt libraries here, that's really the purpose of it is, is giving you a really good starting point that you can start with here to explore generative AI use cases. You can browse prompts that have been tested. So the ones that we have in there right now, uh, people have tested these in the tools. They know that they work and get the output that they're expecting. So it helps you boost productivity. And then of course, as we always talk about on these calls, we encourage you to share your prompts with others. So it's going to help others if you share the prompts that you have, because chances are, if you're trying to use a co-pilot or an AI tool for something, someone else could benefit from that same use case. So that's why we're doing this. Now, there's also another thing that I'm going to be showing you a few different demos, but the other thing I want to show is a prompt to manager app. So this is a sample on our Power Platform samples repo uh, that I actually built that shows if you want to kind of do something more internally for your organization, that you can have this internal application built in Power Apps to kind of categorize your different prompts that you have, and then everyone in your org can benefit from that, and you can create a list of favorites. So with all that, let's dive into the demos that we want to show. So we're going to be highlighting a few prompts from the prompt repo and that prompt manager application. So you can see how it all works together. So the prompt library, and David, of course, is putting all these links in the chat here, is available at aka.ms forward slash power platform prompts. So the first kind of stage that you'll get here is where you can browse the different prompts that we have. So this is kind of just an, an easy way to see what we have. So we can click on any one of these prompts like this plagiarism detector. And we can easily copy and paste directly from the screen and we can filter by the different services uh, that it's related to. Like if there's Dolly prompts that we're looking for, Azure OpenAI, whatever it might be. But if we look at this, the base of it is on GitHub. So if we go over to GitHub here, there's a link just by the way in the upper right hand corner that will take you to the GitHub repo where all of this is stored. So if we look at our prompt repo, we have a prompts folder. And then in that prompts folder, we have different folders for all other related technologies. So whether you're wanting prompts related to Power Apps, Automate, even Power Pages, we just got a new sample from Ralph on Power Pages, which is really cool, Power Virtual Agents and AI Builder. 
So you would just dive into the different kind of folder that you want. So I happen to know that maybe I want some Power Apps prompts. So again, the, some of these are, are new prompts that we just have from, from Ralph the other day. So I can see there's one for a prompt collector and then one that looks pretty interesting to me for the social media tracker for analytics. So we go into the prompt and then we see a description of kind of what it does for us. So this particular one is helping to create a starting point where we can kind of track metrics for social media posts. And then, of course, supported languages. So this is another thing I wanted to highlight. If you're looking to contribute to the repo, we do eventually want to support multiple languages for these prompts as some of the co-pilots and things expand and support broader languages. So that's why if you look at the structure, you'll see this uh, ENUS folder. So if you do speak other languages and you're able to put your prompts in different languages, eventually we can have that multi-language support. But the prompt itself is stored in those language folders. And if we want to use this, it's extremely simple. So here is a prompt that Ralph has already tested. And he knows that it gets him the result that he wants to build this social media tracking Power App. So now all I have to do is copy that and go over to Power Apps and we'll use our copilot. So we're at make.powerapps.com right now and we'll go into the Power Apps copilot, paste in Ralph's prompt. Now, another thing you'll notice in these prompts is we have these brackets and in between the brackets we have text. So this is the way kind of telling you that you wanna customize the output here. So start in text, you wanna remove that and then you'll just replace it with your values. So whether you want, you know, phone cloud apps or what you're wanting to track there. So I'll just, um, I'll keep what Ralph has, that sounds good. I'll just remove these start in text because that's the value that I want there. And let's go ahead and click enter. So we'll see what Power Apps Copilot does. We're doing this all in real time here. We'll see what happens. Now we'll say, you know, sometimes with the Copilot, you might get slightly different results. So Ralph might have got something a little bit different in his Copilot than what I'm going to get here. But generally, it's pretty, pretty close. Oh, awesome. You know, you've got to love Copilot there. It was just working the other day. And that's what I said with doing, uh, doing all this real time. Sometimes if you do it twice, um, it'll... <laughs> It'll behave and uh, we'll see what happens. If not, we'll move on to the next one because I, I know this works. There you go. Okay. There it is. So the, there's the uh, the app there, the Dataverse table in this case that the Copilot created for us. So that's pretty much everything that we need there to customize, um, to have this social media tracking application. So it's automatically getting columns for reach and impressions and engagement and clicks and all that great stuff. So we just click create app and then now we have a fully functioning Power App that's responsive and all the great stuff that Copilot gives us with Power Apps Copilot, thanks to that prompt from Ralph. I didn't have to go and think about exactly what I needed to put in to make that happen in the fields. I know that this works and I'm good to go. So that's just a, a really great way of how this can help you. So this is a Power Apps example, but we have the same thing as we saw in the repo there for Power Automate and all the other different Power Platform tools. And Ralph is relieved that, that it worked. Of course it worked. I think that was user error on my part. Of course your prompt works. So I'll try to, if Power Apps would be really fast here, I just want to show you the output of app. So here we go. Here's an app to be able to manage our social media, which is great. And then we have the same thing for Power Automate. So these are all the Power Automate examples that we have here. Again, all of these links are going to be in the chat, but if we want to do like an expense reimbursement workflow automation, there is a prompt for that, which same exact thing. We would just copy this particular prompt, go into Power Automate Copilot, and have it generate the suggested flow structure for us. And we could customize the inputs there of where we want to you know, send the request to and all that and get pre-tested great prompts. And then finally, the last thing here. So this is, again, check out that prompt library and get some inspiration and ideas. And if you have prompts to share, please do share that on there. But that's more everything that we put on there is externally facing. Everyone can benefit for it, which is great. But maybe you have some prompts that are really specific to your business. And maybe you don't want to share those widely, but you do want a system for your organization or maybe just for your personal use to keep track of your favorite prompts. And that's where this prompt manager application fits in. Again, this is all on the repo, so you can download and, and install that in your, um, in your tenant and all that. But it just gives you a way to kind of uh, arrange your prompts by products. So if you want to see all your, you know, your Dolly prompts or Azure OpenAI and by category. So maybe you're getting prompts like uh, marketing related, IT related, and then you can just browse those. And then it has an easy uh, add to favorites. So you can create a list of your favorite prompts there. And then it has a uh, built-in copy and paste. So it's an easy copy button. I don't have to do what I was doing in the prompt repo there. 
And um, I can just copy that, paste that into my Copilot of Choice or Tool of Choice, and I'm good to go. And you can add notes and all that. So it's just a really great tool to check out if you want to have an internal uh, repository as well. So that is all I had. Definitely encourage you to check out the links David posted in the chat to check out the repo, check out that application, and share your prompts as you're starting to use some of these AI tools. Thank you.